Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back for week seven of the Global Battle Association, the GBA. This week we are taking on Lars or El Scizor and his Borussia Don fan. Uh, a matchup that I was very excited uh, for all season. Lars has been doing very well. He's been on, a, on a quite a tear. I believe he lost last week, week six. Uh, but other than that, he went under, undefeated, so uh, quite impressive. Good on him. Uh, he's got quite the scary team, honestly. I think he did a great job drafting, and he got a, a lot of really, really good uh, mons on his squad. So let's go over that team, as you can see on the right side of your screen. He has Kieran Black, Jirachi, Azumarill, Tangrowth, Conkeldur, Lanaris Incarnate, Mandibuzz, Salazzle, Cofagrigus, Mega Manectric, and Deoxys Attack as his Uber. Well, his other Uber is actually Landorus Incarnate because it is Sheer Force, and we all know that Lars loves to use Mr. Man in the GBA. So, definitely something to watch out for. I think I think his team as a whole is extremely threatening. Kieran Black, with, especially with a Z move. As you can see, Kieran Black and Jirachi are both Z, Z holders. Uh, that thing could definitely be a, a, quite the issue. Uh, we have Landorus, uh, of course, with Sheer Force Life Orb is just terrifying. Um, Mega Manectric and Deoxys Attack have really good speed tiers against me. Uh, I don't have anything for that. Um, even Stoutland has a little bit of a, an issue, especially if, one, of, uh, if Deoxys Attack is Scarfed or even Landorus Incarnate, he can outspeed uh, with both of those. And um, he even has the Salazzle, and the Salazzle, once again, is a very good speed tier against me. The only thing on my team outspeeding it is the Tornado Therian. So, uh, very, very dangerous team. Now, one thing that I did notice is that a lot of his uh, other Mons, other than the ones that I mentioned, um, have very low base speeds. Cafagragus, uh, Tangrowth, Azumarill, Mandibuzz is not generally high, especially if it's not invested. So... Uh, as, as well as Conkeldur, so his entire sort of uh, defensive core is very slow, and that's very good, because that means that Mawile can take advantage of them. Uh, so let's go over the team that we are bringing for Lars this week. First member on the squad is Rotomwash Greg with a Shookaberry, Hydro Pump, Toxic, Pain Split, and Volt Switch, mainly Spit F invested. I have 204 HP, that's what I had left over after I put 52 into speed. This was to get me to 113, and you guys will understand why in a second. Um, Max Spideff, as well as some HP, as I mentioned already. Now, why am I Shookaberry? You're like, Aster, you have Levitate. What, what are you doing? Okay. Let's go over his team, right? So, he's got Kieran Black. That thing has Terravolt. And he's also got Landorus, which has Gravity. So the reason that I went Spadef with this set is that I can switch in on Landorus no matter what attack it goes for, whether it be Gravity, whether it be Rock Slide, whether it be Earth Power and it doesn't affect me. No matter what he goes for on the following turn, I can always get off a Hydro Pump unless he crits me. If he doesn't crit me, Shookaberry will activate on his Earth Power if he went for Gravity. I'll be able to live and knock him out with a Hydro Pump. Uh, I opted uh, for Hydro Pump over HP Ice because Hydro Pump actually does more. It's uh, it's a significant amount more. Plus, uh, he has a higher likelihood of running Yachi Berry than he does Pasho Berry because he naturally outspeeds Rotom, obviously. So, uh, that's, uh, that's something that I felt was necessary despite the mischance from Hydro Pump. Uh, that's uh, it's a very scary thing to have to deal with potentially uh, and we'll see uh, what happens in the game So uh, moving on to the next me member on the team. We have bat signal back once again this time with a choice scarf set We've got moon guys beam moon blast ice beam and tailwind. Uh, I brought choice scarf one other time uh, I feel like it's very necessary this game mainly because he has a deoxys attack uh, and that thing is very scary, especially if it gets uh, any kind of damage. If he gets any kind of damage across my team, E-Speed can sweep me. Lunala stops this because my speed is designed to uh, outspeed max speed Deoxys attack. Now, um, you're seeing the set. Uh, obviously, I went max modest. I put the rest into HP, defense, and speed F. Um, and uh, the speed, as we already mentioned, is for Dio attack. Uh, but the last move on the set is Tailwind, and this is actually not the only Tailwind on the team. What my team has over his is that I have better speed control options. Uh, he's limited to, like, Rock Polish Lando, and um, I think that's it, actually. I can't see anything else that naturally gets any way to set up its speed. Cafagragus maybe with Trick Room, but that doesn't really help him because my team is Trick Room oriented. Um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I don't know if Deoxys attack gets agility, but I don't know why you'd bring that anyway. 
uh, to be perfectly honest, it doesn't make much sense. But, uh, but Tailwind is on there because, and this is why we have the 113 speed on Rotom, is because once I have a Tailwind up, I have a lot of threats against his team. Things that he does not switch into uh, at all. And one of them is this Lunala, and this thing can force a lot of switches, mainly into his Mandibuzz. I do expect Mandibuzz to come. I expect it to be the main check to Lunala. Uh, Jirachi is not a good check because of Moongeist Beam. Uh, Conkeldur is not a good check because of the Psychic Stab. Uh, AV Tangrowth, eh, not not good enough. <laughs> it's not, it's not going to cut it. And if he brings Tangrowth, he's bringing it physically defensive because he wants to cover Mawile and Titar. So uh, I think that having Tailwind as an option when I know that I'm forcing a switch is very, very solid for me uh, because it gets me out into... Uh, into bigger threats against him potentially. So uh, that's Lunala. Moving on to the other Tailwinder on the team, we have 49% the Tornado Therian coming this week. Um, I forgot to make it shiny, so it's not shiny in the battle, unfortunately. Uh, I like to have the Blue Man crew over here, <laughs> typically, but uh, but you guys will see non-shiny Tornadus. Uh, I built this team really quickly. Uh, I'm recording this on Sunday morning, by the way. Uh, and I built this uh, exactly 24 hours ago, or 26 hours ago, rather, uh, at around 4.30 in the morning <laughs> from Saturday, uh, from Friday into Saturday, uh, before Lars and I played. Uh, so, and we played at 2 p.m. on Saturday, yesterday. So, uh, I didn't have a lot of time to build. Uh, I was tired, and I was... Um, uh, I, I probably didn't make the best build that I could, and I also forgot to make my Tornado shiny, as you can see. So, um, I still think that I'm going the right route with this team. So we have uh, this this Tornado Flyanium Z Hurricane, Icy Wind, U-Turn, and Tailwind. So the only thing that really wants to take uh, Flyanium Z on his team is uh, Jirachi. Uh, Mega Benectric sort of, but it takes a lot of damage, and Mandibuzz, if it's specially defensive, which is most likely going to be, can switch in on Z-Hurricane into Hurricane if rocks aren't up. If they are up, it's a little bit more difficult for that thing to be able to come in uh, safely. So Z-Hurricane, very good option against this team, great option against things like Kirin Black, uh, against Deoxys Attack when, when I have Tailwind up, against Landorus, against uh, Conkeldur and Tangrowth mainly, of course. Uh, Salazzle for the easy knockout as well as Cafagragus, so I think that Z-Hurricane was the best option. Uh, I have 60 in special attack. This is actually to make sure that Icy Wind KOs uh, Lando Eye with the amount of HP that I expect him to bring on Lando, what he's uh, basically allowed to bring if he wants to outspeed my Salamence naturally uh, and still have enough uh, investment into his special attack. Or attack, we'll see. Uh, but... Uh, I have U-Turn on the set as well, and this is mainly because if he brings the Mega Manectric as a check to my Tornadus, and I go for Tailwind on the turn that I know that he's switching out of his uh, Tangrowth or his Conkeldur, for example, his Manectric comes in and I get off a U-Turn. And basically, his Manectric has to predict what I'm going into. Uh, one of the main switch-ins that I have to Manectric is Nidoqueen, and the other one is Tyranitar. If he clicks HP Ice as I go Titar, it's bad for him. If he clicks Thunderbolt as I go into Nidoqueen, also very bad for him, so it's it's a big 50-50 game uh, at that point with the Mega Main, uh, which is why I feel that it doesn't have the best matchup against me, and I feel that it's sort of exploitable, uh, and why I think that it might not come. Uh, but I think that it's still a good option to have, and I think that my team with two Tailwinders can deal with any uh, sort of build that he's going to bring. Lunala is a little bit more difficult. I kind of have to Tailwind on a turn where I know I'm going to go down. It's kind of just setting up the rest of my team. Uh, sort of like setting up a last, last, dick, last ditch uh, trick room, excuse me. Um, but it's Tailwind, obviously. And Tornadus is a little bit more freehand. It's, it's sort of, uh, I can click it whenever I want and get out with U-Turn uh, pretty safely against anything. Uh, I don't have any coverage for Jirachi, and if he f ends up finding out all my coverage, then he will probably end up switching that thing always. Uh, but if I go for Tailwind into U-Turn, uh, once again, it's a 50-50, right? Does he go for Iron Head or does he go for Zen Headbutt on my uh, on my Needle Queen or my T-Tar? If he ends up going for Zen Headbutt or Ice Punch, for example, on T-Tar and doesn't get the freeze with Ice Punch, then T-Tar is going to destroy him. And uh, if he uh, Iron Heads my Needle Queen, then Needle Queen's free to click attacks for the next three turns. So, um, well, Tailwind is four turns, I believe. Yeah, so first turn and then second turn is U-turn. So I have two turns of Tailwind once uh, Nidoqueen comes in. So it's, it's kind of like a suicide move uh, as well. It's, it's a move that I'm going to click when I know I'm going down, for example. 
uh, but it's also a good option just to uh, to give some speed for a couple of turns to a lot of my big threats. So let's go over Liz, the first threat. We have a Life Orb Sheer Force set with Sludge Wave, Earth Power, Ice Beam, and Focus Blast. So I contemplated the set a lot. Um, 127 speed, this is actually to outspeed uh, Scarf Landorus uh, under uh, Tailwind. Uh, the rest of my team was to be Deoxys attack speed. Uh, so the, the 113 over here uh, was was to be Deoxys speed. And you guys will see Titar's speed after I'll show you. It's, uh, well, I'll show you now. It's 113 as well. It's it's actually max adamant. Um, max speed hits exactly 113. So that allowed speed Deoxys as well. So, um, Needle Queen, I made sure to outspeed Landorus specifically because I didn't want to have that situation where he is Scarfed Landorus beating my, uh, my Salamence, which is, uh, max speed for him, and then I can't outspeed it in Tailwind, that would suck. So, I decided to go with, uh, with this speed 244, I have very little bulk, 12, so HP Ice would do a lot from an, from an extra if he does call it correctly. Um, Special Attack is just maxed out with Modest and the Coverage, so Sludge Wave hits... Uh, Azumarill, Tangrowth, uh, Conkeldur for decent damage, as well as Mandibuzz, and uh, his Mega Main and his Deoxys. Earth Power hits Jirachi, um, Jirachi Salazzle, and uh, Mega Main uh, for super effective on Mega Main, so I don't, I can't have the option of going for Sludge Wave or Earth Power. Ice Beam hits uh, mainly Lando, but can also hit Mandibuzz, Tangrowth, uh, and I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. And the last move is Focus Blast. Now, this is just specifically for Kieran Black. Because if I get into a situation where I uh, where I go for Tailwind with Tornadus, uh, he goes uh, for... Well, he does whatever, and then I U-turn, and as he goes into Kieran Black, I get in my Nido Queen, and I can click Focus Blast. That's really good for me. Nothing else is really going to knock out the Kieran Black. Uh, if it's heavily HP invested, it's going to take Sludge Wave perfectly fine. So uh, I needed the Focus Blast to be able to knock it out. As much as I don't like the prospect of being able to miss, uh, I think that it was a necessary evil, uh, as well as with um, Hurricane and Hydro Pump. So I'm running a lot of uh, inaccurate moves this week. But that's okay. I I'm going to deal with it. We'll see where it takes us. The next big threat on the team that can profit from Tailwind is Togavoir, the Mega Mawile. I'm hitting 102 speed, so I won't outspeed uh, Deoxys attack. But um, I will come very close. Uh, I'll be within one point of Mega Manectric. And basically, I can outspeed anything that's not a Scarfer under uh, Tailwind. I'm running a lot of HP uh, and 68 attack with Adamant Nature. And I'm running Taunt, Play Rough, Knock Off, and Sucker Punch. Now, why Taunt? So the idea here is that I expect... Um, the main check that I expected when building two Mega Mawile was Cofagragus, because if Cofag switches in on a play rough, takes about 50%, but then makes me lose my huge power ability, and he's Culverberry, and I knock off the next turn, he can either go for a Will-O-Wisp or a Pain Split and get everything back or burn me, which would cripple me for the rest of the game. Taunt stops that. It gets him down to 50 as I play rough on his switch, uh, or it's going to do a little bit less. It's going to do about 40%. Uh, and if he's Culberberry, he's not getting any recovery from his leftovers, because he's not leftovers. Uh, and then I can taunt, and unless he goes for Shadow Ball, I'm good. Um, later in the game, once um, once I have him taunted, he can, or he knows I have taunt, uh, he can go for Shadow Ball. The HP on here is to give him the lowest chance possible of getting uh, a 3 hit KO with Shadow Ball. It's about a 37% chance to 3-hit KO me from full with Shadow Ball. Uh, from no no special attack invested, obviously. So that's why I decided to put so much into HP uh, and less into attack. Because I figured that Mawile's already going to be breaking regardless. Uh, this goes up to nearly 300. Uh, falls just short at 296. And that's still a breaker. It's still going to do its job just fine. Play Rough destroys him and Knock Off destroys him as well. So uh, I think this is perfect. Now... Let's talk about the elephant in the room. We didn't really cover Deoxys attack too much, and it is a big threat. It's not something that I lead off well against, because my team doesn't have anything that's naturally faster outside of Scarfers. If I want to break a potential Sash, the only way to do that is with Tyranitar. And Tyranitar is Focus Sash, so we're running Stone Edge, Crunch, Ice Punch, and uh, Stealth Rock. This is my anti-lead against him. No matter what he leads, pretty much anything, 
um, Titar can deal with it. Outside of Jirachi, Jirachi is the only thing that I will definitely switch out on. And the reason for that is that I don't want to get Iron Head flinched. Uh, everything else, I'm good. He can go for Focus Blast with Kirim. He can go for Super Power with Deoxys Attack. He can go for uh, Earth Power with Landorus. Drain Punch with Conkeldur. It doesn't matter what's in. Um, even Azu, I, I don't care. I'm going for Stone Edge. Like, it doesn't matter what, what leads off against me. I will have an option against it because I am Focus Sash. Uh, I have Stealth Rocks on here. The idea is, if he leads off with Deoxys Attack, I am clicking Crunch. I don't, I don't care uh, if he clicks an offensive move or if he clicks Rocks. The next turn, he'll die to Sand, obviously, with a combination of Crunch plus Sand Stream. Um, and on the next turn, then I can click Rocks. If he clicks an offensive move like Super Power and brings me down to my Sash as I Crunch him and knock him out and get him out of the game, he'll go into something that can kill off my Tyranitar. I don't have hazard removal on the team. If you haven't noticed, these two did not pack Defog. The reason for that is that I feel that if he goes into Jirachi uh, on the turn after he he had Deoxys in and went for Super Power, I don't think he's going to go for Rocks. I think he's going to prioritize going uh, for the kill on Titar because he doesn't want to lose another Mon to, T to lead Titar just to end up having gotten Rocks up. I don't think that's worth it for Lars. Yes, he breaks my Shadow Shield. Yes, he gets more damage off on Tornadus, but I still don't think it's worth it because this is not taking substantial damage and neither is this. So I don't think that rocks are a huge priority for him. I think that keeping rocks off my off his side are more important. If he went for rocks on the turn uh, on that turn two with Jirachi, uh, as I went for rocks, then we both have them up, and then he's sitting with a Kirin Black. A Lando Eye and a Mandibuzz, potentially a Salazzle, that all have to take a lot of damage from rocks every time they switch in. So I don't think that's worth it, which is why I think he's going to attack with Jirachi on the following turn. Which is why I will probably end up switching it out into either Rotom or into Tornadus to see what's going on with his Jirachi. Uh, at that point, once I get up a Tailwind at some point in the game and I'm able to U-turn on a free turn or sack something and get a free turn... I can then bring in my T-Tar, under Tailwind, once again, we're outspeeding his fastest Mon Deoxys attack, which means outside of Scarfers, I'm outspeeding everything, and I'm able to get up my rocks at that point, uh, and that's the idea with this set, and that's why I'm running Tailwind as well, I thought that this was a great way to support the Tailwind uh, option on my team, and uh, we're going to see how it works out. So I think that this team was well enough constructed with the little time that I had and how tired I was to carry me through this game. but. We'll see that as we jump into it. So let's get into the game. Let's see what Lars brought. And we can see that on his side, he has Mandibuzz, Jirachi, Deoxys Attack, Landorus Incarnate, Tangrowth, and Kirin Black. So all massive threats. Um, especially Deoxys Attack, Lando I and Kirin Black, definitely. I expect Kirin Black to be a Z-move, as I see the, the, uh, the team preview. I expect uh, Lando to be Life Orb. And I expect his Deoxys attack to be Focus Sash. That's what I have in my mind. Uh, I see Tangrowth. On Team Preview, I didn't notice that he didn't have Cathagrigus. When the game started, then I saw it. And I was like, wait a minute. He has no Mawile switch-ins. I can just click Play Rough repeatedly. So that's the game plan. Get in Mawile, click Play Rough as much as possible on his slower stuff like Mandibuzz and uh, Tangrowth. Mandibuzz always gives me a free Mawile. It's, it's pretty much inherent that I will be able to get in Mawile on Mandibuzz, especially on U-turns and Volt Switches, obviously. And uh, and yeah, so that, that's the game plan, is get in Mawile as much as possible and try to kill everything. Um, the team that I have looks well equipped for this. Uh, I do have the Nido Queen, which does uh, do a lot of damage to his team uh, between Earth Power, Ice Beam, and, um, and Sludge Wave. I should be faster than Mandibuzz. Uh, with uh, with the speed that I have on Nido Queen, I'm running max speed, so uh, I should be able to outspeed his Mandibuzz or near max speed. Um, and under Tailwind, it does a lot of damage. Titar is my lead of choice, 100% all the time. So let's take a look at how this battle went, and uh, we're gonna lead off with Titar. We got Lars in front of us here. He's got a very basic outfit compared to my other opponents this season, which is fine. Uh, I have the most basic of outfits. I haven't done anything with my trainer, so. Uh, we are going to lead off with uh, Titar as he leads off with his Mandibuzz. And uh, I'm going to get up my Sandstream here. 
has, uh, I'm, I'm facing down Amanda Buzz, so I know he's gonna switch out. There's no way he's staying in. If anything, he's clicking U-turn, and he knows that he's faster than me, but I don't think he's risking his Scarf. So I'm gonna, uh, turn one, actually go for a Stone Edge, because I want to potentially knock out the Amanda Buzz. Amanda Buzz is the one thing standing in my way of clicking, uh, Moon Guy Speed with, uh, with Lunala. So he switches into his Tangrowth. He didn't really have a good switch into Stone Edge, uh, regardless, outside of Jirachi, which I could have crunched. Uh, so I'm gonna go for rocks here. I see that he's a physically defensive Tangrowth, which means I know that my T-Tar is about to get slept. But it's fine because I'd rather rocks up than switch into anything else on a Sleep Powder. I'm gonna let my T-Tar get slept. And uh, on this following turn, I believe I'm going to switch out into Tornadus uh, to try to get momentum off of this Tangrowth, uh, as we will see here. I am going to switch, that's obvious, but I end up going into, yes, Tornadus. So 49% comes out here, non-shiny, unfortunately, and he's going to withdraw his Tangled, so he's going to get his Regenerator immediately. He's going to go into Mr. Man, the Landorus, and I have the option of Icy Winding here, uh, which I believe I do to this uh, Lando. I do go for Icy Wind, or I think I actually U-turn here. As he goes into Amanda Buzz, uh, I expected him not to stay in on a potential Icy Win, yes. Uh, and I'm gonna go for U-Turn, and this is the situation I was talking about right before the game started. We're gonna get in Mawile, and we are going to click Play Rough. <laughs> no matter what, we're clicking Play Rough. Uh, there is nothing that switches in comfortably on it, nothing that can take it too well. Uh, and uh, his Amanda Buzz is gonna show that it's leftovers, it's obviously Overcoat for the Sand, uh, and it's taken uh, Rock's damage already, so we know that it's at 76. So he's going to switch out, he's gonna go to Mila, this is the Jirachi, and he's going to be able to eat up this um, this play rough. I could have knocked off on the switch, but if he was Colbert, it didn't make a difference. So I decided that uh, this was the better option, was just to go for uh, play rough, try to net a kill somewhere. If he didn't switch into Jirachi, something was gonna take a huge amount of damage or die. So we get off uh, a good damage there on the Jirachi. The sand goes down. I'm gonna go for a knockoff here. Lars decides to go for the Stealth Rock. So I'm thinking, okay, he's probably Colbert Berry and he's going to live this. Uh, but no, I go for a knockoff and uh, he's actually Expert Belt. And we're going to uh, knock that off right here. And uh, he's going to lose his Jirachi. So Expert Belt, I was, I was kind of uh, intrigued by. Uh, he's now gonna go into his Landorus. And uh, I considered staying in here, knowing that I have two good switch-ins in Tornadus and Rotom to an Earth Power. Uh, I figured that he might go for a different coverage move, and I might be able to get a kill here with Mawile, but I don't want to risk that because Mawile still puts in a ton of work, and Rotom is still a decent switch. He goes for Rock Slide, and does, it does a lot of damage. I calc it up, and it looks like Life Orb, so I'm like, okay, this is fine. I'm going to go for a Pain Split here because his Lando's still healthy enough to where I can get back a good amount of health. Uh, and he ends up going into Tangrowth, so I'm gonna get even more health from this Pain Split. And I'm gonna end up at the point where I will not die to another Rock Slide uh, in, the, in the future if I get a free switch into Rotom. So I'm looking okay. Right here I'm gonna go for the Volt Switch, I know that I'm faster than this Tangrowth. And uh, we are gonna get the Volt out. I do have my Sleeping Titar, so he cannot Sleep Powder that. Uh, so as a result, I am going to take this opportunity to bring in 49% just as a pivot. Uh, I have the option of going for Z Hurricane. Uh, at any time. He goes for a Giga Drain, it does very little damage. And right here I'm actually gonna go for a Hurricane because I feel like uh, he doesn't have a switch in, his Jirachi is dead, and if I can just get off a Hurricane on anything, uh, including the Mandibuzz, I have a chance to 2-8 KO it. I calced it up. Uh, Z Hurricane is doing like 40, so regular Hurricane is doing about uh, 24. Uh, so I should be able to 2-hit to, to KO it uh, because he's going to be at 50 when he switches in with rocks. So I go for Hurricane. I do miss, unfortunately. He goes for an HP Ice, and I'm going to go for a U-turn right here. Uh, once again, he risks his Tangrowth. He, I guess he figured that he didn't really need it anymore because his offensive presence could check my Mawile decently enough. And I'm going to go out into Mawile here. Uh, and he goes for another HP Ice, uh, probably just uh, playing off the, another miss, which is fine. I'm going to take very little damage from that. Of course, I don't have an Intimidate off on this Tangrowth, and I do expect it to be Earthquake uh, to be able to deal some kind of damage to my Mawile. Now that I've seen HP Ice, it's definitely not HP Fire. I'm going to go for Knock Off here, mainly because I didn't want his Tangrowth uh, to constantly have left Leftovers Recovery outside of the Regenerator if it did um, decide to switch out after I attacked it, and I knew that Play Rough wasn't going to kill. So I decided to uh, to just go for the knockoff and then into play rough on the following turn and we are going to knock out the uh, Tangrowth. So two of his defensive options and Jirachi, well obviously it was Expert Belt so maybe not, but uh, two of his bulkier mons are gone. Now he brings in Deoxys and I just want to, um, to pause this real quick. Um, 
he brings in Deoxys on my Mega Mawile. He doesn't know my full set yet. He's only seen two moves. He's seen knockoff. He's seen play rough. Uh, Mawile is one of the most recognizable mons for having Sucker Punch, probably right after Bisharp. Uh, it's one of its more common moves. And Deoxys has access to extreme speed. If it's Banded or Life Orb Extreme Speed, it'll knock me out. If it's anything else, probably not. It's it's probably in my favor to live. So if that's his idea, is to go for E-Speed, and he's locked in or he's not Scarfed, I can go into Lunala after, and Moonblast actually revenges him. And since he lost his Jirachi and his Tangrowth, Moonblast is very free against his remaining four. Um, as a result, the only logical explanation that I thought of in my head when this thing hit the field was he's substitute there's no other possibility it's it's sub and that's it i'm not going to allow this thing to get up a sub in front of me and i'm going to go for knockoff and truth be told he is substitute so he goes for sub i go for knock and i just want to keep this thing away from a sub uh so i'm going to continuously spam knockoff here uh, and just make sure that he can't stay behind a sub so my Lunala can revenge him. Psych, I go for Sucker Punch. <laughs> and I get the turn right, and down goes the Deoxys. Mawile gets its third kill of the match. We catch Lars going for an attack, reading the fact that I might not have Sucker Punch, and I got that play right. So we got three kills with this thing this week, up to 10. Way to go, Mawile. Togavar, you put in the most, yo. Uh, I'm going to go for Sucker Punch here as it fails against his Kirim. He goes for a Substitute. Now, if he's Sub Roost, it's a little bit of an issue, but not too much. Um, but I don't expect him to be Sub Roost. I expect him to, ha to need coverage for everything. So I'm going to go for another Sucker, and I'm going to fade the Sub. What this means is that his Kirim is now in range of my Lunala outside of the possible uh, Roselli Berry on his, his Kirim, which I don't really expect. Uh, but I'm going to go into Lunala, and I'm going to fire off a Moonblast. If he's Roselli Shadow Claw, then he got me. But that also means that he's in range of Torn, and Torn can pretty much clean up the game at this point, so long as I get a decent enough roll on the uh, on the man Manda Buzz with Hurricane. I'm able to, to pivot around on, uh, on Mandy a little bit and deal some damage. But I'm going to go for the Moonblast. He's not Roselli ba Berry, and down goes the uh, Kirin Black. So now all that's left is the Landorus and the Mandibuzz. I'm going to switch out of my Lunala because this could be a good win con in the end game. I'm going to go into Torn, knowing full well that he could be Rock Polish, which he is, and he's going to get that up. And uh, I know that I'm going to die right here to Rock Slide if he connects. So I'm just going to go for a Z Hurricane uh, on the off chance that he misses. He does not. He connects with my Tornadus, and he knocks it out. Now, moment of truth right here. The only Mon that I have at this point that can knock this thing out and not risk it being a uh, dark move, uh, last move as its coverage, is Rotom, is Greg. Um, if Rotom misses Hydro, <laughs> I lose uh, if he has a dark move. If he doesn't have a dark move, I can come back in with Lunala, click Moongeist Beam, uh, knock this thing out, and then uh, afterwards go into Titar. Titar pretty much walls Mandibuzz at that point, I just need to wait till it wakes up, uh, and then I can, um, I can knock it out with a stone edge, obviously, uh, so long as, uh, he's in, well, he's taking, like, 66% from stone edge, uh, so I'd need to connect a lot of them, but I also have ice punches coverage, and I could potentially freeze it down, uh, and then I just need to get it into a range where Tornadus can kill it with, uh, with Z, well, Tornadus is dead, never mind. Um, I just need to uh, get it in a range where uh, Needle Queen's Ice Beam would be able to to knock it out at that point. Uh, so if this Hydro misses, um, it's a little bit more of a precarious situation. So let's see what happens. Uh, he goes for the Rock Slide. Obviously, he cannot flinch me, so that's not even an option. He could have missed once again, but he did not. He does get the Rock Slide off. This is a 2-8-KO. I go for the Hydro Pump. And we hit, and your Montreal Habsols are now 5 and 2, as we are able to take down the Borussia Dawn fan. GG to my man Lars, a great game. Uh, I think that uh, the pivotal moment was definitely, um, never mind, the Mandibuzz is still alive, <laughs> but I'm going to go for uh, for a uh, Toxic right here uh, on the Mandibuzz, then I'm going to paint split up as he roosts, and then I'm going to go for a, uh, a Hydro Pump to put it in range of Volt Switch and Volt Switch out and kill it. So that's the last, like, 3-4 turns. Um, but GG to, to Lars, this is uh, the wrapped up game. 
Uh, I think that he played really well. As I was saying, I think that the pivotal moment was me getting off that Sucker Punch on the Deoxys, getting rid of it. The turn that I did, I think that was huge. Uh, there, There's no denying that. I was able to, uh, to basically turn the game completely in my favor because of that. And... Um, and really just uh, just keep up the pressure from there and be able to deal with uh, with his last remaining threats, which were Kirim and uh, Lando I. So that's going to be it for this game. Uh, guys, if you uh, if you did enjoy as I'm going to let the uh, battle finish, uh, make sure to leave a like down below. Make sure to go check out Lars in the description as well. He's got a lot of great content. He's in quite a few leagues. Uh, he's, he's even got German content. So <laughs> if you want to, if that's your kind of thing, if you're German, then go and check him out. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, great guy. Uh, we played three times now, um, two and one against him when we beat him back in GPC and then he destroyed us, uh, because of, uh, miss EVing on my, uh, Greninja, I believe it was, or my Infernape in, uh, in March Madness 2017, I want to say, uh, yeah, 20, eh, yeah, 2017. Uh, so Lars, uh, Lars, a very competent and great player. Uh, and, uh, we really just got a, a lucky break with that knockoff into Sucker Punch. I think, uh, that caught him off guard and we were able to, to dominate the game from there. So definitely go and check him out. Uh, you guys are definitely want to go and see his side, his commentary on the battle should be very interesting and, uh, go and give him a, a little subscription as well, because, uh, he's definitely making playoffs. I don't doubt Lars at all. I think that his skill is enough to, to carry him into playoffs and uh, he should be one of the eight coaches that make it through. So uh, go and follow him. But yeah, guys, uh, as I said, if you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, if this is your first time on the channel, if you enjoyed the battle or otherwise. And uh, we will catch you guys next week. Uh, and I believe I am taking on Mr. Num Nexus and the Pittsburgh Pichus. Um, this is actually pretty exciting for me. This is the uh, first time that I'm uh, playing a YouTube. I want to say this is the first time I'm playing a YouTuber that uh, I watched uh, very early on into to getting into Pokemon. Um, Nexus was one of the first people that I uh, I was ever watching. It was like Hayden, Shofu, Shady, and then Nexus. So uh, I'm very excited for that. I'm looking forward to it. He's got a pretty scary team with like Zygarde Complete, Mimikyu. Uh, it's it's quite terrifying, but uh, but we're gonna try to deal with it the best we can, and I'm gonna be building for that uh, probably later today, maybe tomorrow, and uh, we're gonna try to play sometime this week, uh, this coming week, and uh, and yeah, that's it. So uh, again, guys, thank you again for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys next week for that game against Nexus. Peace.